Hello friends, I am Anindya Datya and today we will learn about how to submit a form in PHP and save the form data into database table. I will divide the whole work process into 5 steps. Step 1 create database and table. Step 2 create the database connection. Step 3 create the HTML form. Step 4 submit the HTML form data and step 5 store the submitted form data into database first of all i will create a new table in database open the xamp control panel and make sure you have apache and mysql both modules are turned on now i will go to php my admin to go to php my admin you have to type localhost slash php my admin and hit enter this is php my admin panel and now i will create a new database here so clicking on this new and here we have create database so i will create php test and clicking on the create button we will create the php test database here and now i have to create a table a database must have a table and we will insert data to table not directly to database so here i will create a new table called contacts so creating it and currently number of column is 4 so i will not change right now so first column will be id that is the unique primary key for this table and primary key is unique for each row and now the type i will select is integer and i will make it auto increment and it will automatically select primary key if not selected then select primary key and now name and the name field will be varchar because we are going to store text so for the varchar you have to provide a length for the varchar field so here i will assign 255 that is the standard value for the length value for the varchar and now phone this is also a varchar field and assign it 255 and last one is email so email is also a worker field and i will assign it 255 so clicking on the save button will create the new table if we go to php test then here we have this contacts table so the database creation part is done now we will go for the coding part to connect our application with database either we can use mysqli or pdo MySQLi is only made for MySQL database whereas the PDO can be used over 12 different type of databases. So the PDO has the advantage because if we want to switch our database we can easily switch over the PDO otherwise both are object oriented so in our case I will use PDO. After creating our database we will go to htdocs folder and inside this folder we will create a new folder php form and here we will create a new file called index.php and now i will open this file here we have three variables so what are the three variables the host variable is the hosting server for the mysql database username is the username for the mysql database password is the password for the mysql database in our case the hosting server of the mysql database is localhost and username is root and password is blank we need these three values to connect a database here we have a try block and catch block so what is try catch block if we place any code inside the try block and if somehow any error occurred inside the try block then the code flow immediately go to the catch block without executing the remaining code inside the try block inside the try block here we have a connection variable and this is actually a video object so here we have the video class when we are creating object of a class we have to use new before the class name and here the video support three parameter first parameter is the host name with the database name second parameter is username of the database and third parameter is the password of the database so here we have mysql that is the database type and here we have the host holding the dollar host value that is localhost and the db name semicolon db name that is php test we have created and here we have the username that is root and here we have the password that is blank now here we have connection arrow set attribute why we have this arrow we have created this connection object of the pdo class so when we 
create an object of a class we can access the class functions by using the arrow but why we are using this we are using this because we are setting the error mode to the exception so if any error occurred it will throw an exception and that will lead us to the catch block and here we will show the message so it will show connected successfully if connection is successful or if any error occurred then it will go to the catch block then it will show connection failed and it will show the corresponding message now i will open this file to open this file i have to open localhost slash php form the folder name and it enter and here we have connected successfully because the database is connected now i will just change the value of the database here so i'll rename it to php test one and i'll reload this page so connection failed sql state and here we have the error unknown database php test one so in that way we can connect the database after that we will use the connection object to access our database and store our data after creating the database connection here i have ended the php tag and here i have started html tag so here we have the basic structure of a html form and here we have head tag and body tag html tag has total two child tag that is head and body that is the mandatory tag for basic html structure and inside body what we will place will be displayed in the browser so here the title tag is actually the title bar of the browser and if i reload this page in browser so here we have php form and here we have the basic html structure of a form so this is the title that is showing here and here we have the form and connected successfully is showing because here i have displayed connected successfully so i'll remove this one and if i reload again then we have only this form and now let me explain about the form like the other html tags form tag has also opening tag and the closing tag and the opening tag of the form has some attribute the must to attributes are action and method the action attribute holds the value of where the form data will be sent when we submit the form that is if we left it blank then the form will be submitted in the same page if we provide any url then on submitting the form the form will be redirected to the url and we have another attribute of the form that is method method can have only two value either get or post if we use get then on submitting the form the form data will be displayed in the url as a parameter if we use post the form data will be passed as hidden and if we use get then it will be passed as displayed in the url let's have a clear concept on method we can only have get or post so here are three type of variables one is dollar underscore request another one is dollar underscore post and another one is dollar underscore get so dollar underscore request can be used for both get and post method and dollar underscore post can only be used for post method and dollar underscore get can only be used for get method and now here i have written print underscore r dollar underscore request printer is used to print an array so when we submit the form it submit the form data as an array i have filled the value here now if i click on the save button so here we can see the array is displayed here and here we can see name holding the value of the name phone is holding the value of the phone email is holding the value of the email now let's check here in the url we don't have any question mark and the parameter now i'll just simply change the method to get and now i'll fill up the form and submit again form is filled up now if i click on the save button 
button then here we have the url parameters so here we have name phone and parameters are divided by person and here we have name equals to an india and phone equals to this value and email equals to this value at the rate is converted to percent 40 and here we have this save contact save and now let's try when we have the get method i will just use print dollar underscore post and save it and now if i submit again then we have value blank but in the url we have the parameters we have url parameters because we have method set is get and we are tried to print dollar underscore post now simply just change the value here to post and now i will submit the form again so here again we have value but still we have the values in parameter let me clear this and submit the form again it was not cleared that's why it just reloaded the page here we don't have the value now and here we are showing the array as post method in most of the form submission case we use post method because it helps us to maintain our security because if we use get method all the parameter name will be displayed in the url and that will cause some security issue that's why we will always use post method where it possible so hope you have got an idea about the post and get method now let's check about the form inputs so here we have three input one is name and every input has a type and name and value all these three are called as attribute the input type that is an attribute which is text here and here the name is name that we are showing here when printing the array and here we have the name phone and the name email and the last one is save contact that has value save and here we can see the submit button name is in the save co underscore contact and as value save and all other value is blank but when we fill up the form and submit the form then it got the values for this input and this printed here so hope you have got an idea about the form also remember the input type text is a self-closing tag so what is the self-closing tag the tags that have not any closing tag is known as self-closing tag so here we can see when we have written the input we don't have the ending tag of the input like we have the div and ending of the div so here we have only a slash that indicates that it is a self-closing tag there are some other inputs that have opening tag and closing tag like select text area the input type submit is also a self-closing tag and if we change the type to button then it will not submit the form both button and submit are used to create a button but we can only submit the form by using input type submit so if we fill the value here and try to submit the form it will not submit we have to use input type submit to submit a form now you can see it's always displaying the array here we have to eliminate this so i'll apply a checking here if is set dollar underscore post and i will add the save contact then it will display the array so here i have placed the print r dollar underscore post inside the if is set dollar underscore post save underscore contact what is this this is the variable holding the value of the submit button so the name is save contact and its value is save this is set will be true when we submit the form now let's try so if i reload this then the array is gone now if i click on the submit button then here we have the array so we will do our form submission operation inside this checking so always use this type of checking to get the form data and here inside this we are going to save the form data into database to store the form data into table we have to write insert query i will create a variable dollar sql and inside this variable i will write the query the syntax for the insert query is insert into table name in our case it's contacts and then we have the field names inside the first bracket our field names are if we click on this table name then here we have the fields if i go to structure and simply you can copy this from here don't need the id it will be auto incremented and this is primary key so one is name and another one is phone and the last one is email so insert into table name and inside the bracket column names and then space values 
and again first packet and then we have to provide the corresponding values and here the value of the name input is dollar underscore post name now here we cannot directly write dollar underscore post because this is a php variable to concatenate a php variable we have to use dot so here starting of the string and here string ends and then we are assigning a variable dollar underscore post then name and again the variable end and dot added to concatenate the remaining string so this is also a string we are generating the dynamic query here by using the values and now comma dollar underscore post phone comma in the same way again we have to provide double quote and inside it we have to provide two dot to concatenate and dollar underscore post and here we have the email and now the most important part inquiry all of these fields are varkar field if we check in database here we have name varkar phone varkar and email varkar the varkar fields always we have to use a single quote to provide the varkar fields value so here single quote start single quote end for the name single quote start and single quote end for the phone and the single quote will always be inside the string part not outside the string part that is not like this this will not work you have to put it inside the string part so here and again here single quote and here we have the single quote so that is the correct query format so that is our query and now we will pass this query into video connection object that is this one so in the next line we have dollar con arrow query and inside this we have dollar sql variable so what is this we are telling connection object to run this query and now if i save this and here if i submit the value before submitting let's check in the database so we don't have any value now now if i submit this it's showing the array because i have printer here and now if i go to the database and if i click on the refresh button here then here we have the inserted data now i will try with another one so here i have added new values now and now if i click on the save button so here the new values generated and if i refresh the database again new row inserted let's try one more time but this time i have a apostrophe in the name so here we have a special character and now if i click on the save button so it produce an error so to avoid this error we have to use add slashes function a double d s l a s h e s add slashes inside the add slashes function we will pass the values so always pass add slashes for the varkar fields and it will solve the issue so here i have added add slashes dollar underscore post name add slashes dollar underscore post phone and add slashes dollar underscore post email save this and submit again then it's submitted and if i refresh here so here we have the third record so we have to use add slashes when we are submitting value for the varkar fields because we don't know what will be the user input so we have to write the code in a safest way so always use add slashes for the varkar fields in that way the php form submission work and we can insert the data into database thanks for watching the video share your experience about this video in the comment section below hit the like button if you like the video and obviously subscribe for more upcoming videos